Hi guys. Uh, so this week we are doing our chapter on hairstyling. Um, now we get to kind of get into the fun stuff. Hairstyling sort of my my favorite. Um, yeah, so we get to get into kind of the good stuff now. So our lesson objectives, um, to execute finger waving, pin curling, and roller setting. Y'all learn to hate me after finger waving and pin curling. Um, perform various blow dry styling techniques, use the proper uh, use of the tools, demonstrate the proper use of a flat iron, perform four basic curl patterns and explain the end result, understand the importance of preparation, sectioning, pinning, and balance in regard to updos, and create three foundational updos of styling up here. Um, those is, that's what we'll work on next week is uh, we'll be starting on updos. So we cannot call ourselves hairstylists if we can only concentrate on one area of our craft. Um, that being said, you know, once you've sort of done everything that, that we do to pass the course and get your license as a quote unquote hairstylist, um, that's when you can sort of branch off if there's things that you prefer to do, but to actually be called a hairstylist, you need to have all the skills um, that it takes to, you know, do every, do every part of what this job entails. Um, you'll learn discipline and dexterity, as you guys have already basically sort of learned with French braiding and things like that. You, you start to use your hands in ways that they've never been used before. And you're basically training those muscles in your hands to work for the job that you're doing. Um, we always start with a client consultation um, and uh, I can't stress this enough about having your own portfolio. So any work that you've ever done, whether it be, you know, on your mannequin head or on friends, family, you do clients, whichever, um, keep, keep photos of everything that you do because clients are much happier to um, see the work that you do than just out of a, a photo book, right? So the basics of wet setting. Wet setting is basically starting with towel dried hair um, and going on from there, whether it be um, roller sets, pin curls, finger waves, blow dry, curling iron, anything that starts with the hair from basically a, a, a towel dried state. So you'll need your combs, tail comb, styling comb, uh, pick and a wide tooth comb, obviously for, for combing through. Um, for brushes, I have a really nice uh, boar bristle brush that I highly recommend if you're, you know, one to invest in a in a tool that you will use forever. I've literally had my my boar bristle brush now for probably 25 years, still like brand new, and I call it my magic brush. And when we do the upstyling next week, um, I'll show you why. Uh, you'll need your rollers. So rollers come in a bunch of various things. There's metallic hot rollers, sponge rollers. Um, we basically in this class will do, we will work with uh, metallic rollers is what we have at the salon. Uh, you need bobby pins, hair pins, your sectioning clips and your jaw clips. Um, Again, we'll kind of I'll kind of go through what I what I'm looking for in regards to bobby pins because you know they're they're unfortunately they're not all made the same, so it's really important that uh, you get good ones so that they you know hold the hair. Finger waving. So this will be the demise of some, <laughs> of some of you. You'll hate me for finger waving, um, but then some of you you know get it really really well. So. Basically, it's the process of shaping the hair into the S pattern. So you've seen it on a lot of the major, you know, stars that have like that, that really tight wave look, or if you brush it out, have that really nice wave look. That all comes down to finger waving. Um, so you use your fingers, combs, and the waving lotion, which is basically just a, a firm hold gel. Um, it was actually the rage of the 20s and 30s and continues to still be popular today. There's two ways of doing finger waves. There's horizontal and vertical. So you move from one side of the head around to the other in a continuous line. 
Um, again, we'll go over all that in our practical portion. Uh, pin curls. They serve as a base for patterns, lines, waves, curls, and rolls that are used in a wide variety of styles. So the base of your pin curl is the stationary uh, foundation of the curl, and it's the part that's closest to the scalp. The stem is the section of the pin curl between the base and the first arc of the curl, um, and it gives the direction of which way the curl is going to go. And then the circle is the part of the pin curl um, that forms the actual complete circle, um, which sort of decides on what size of the, that the curl is going to be. Obviously, like a smaller, tighter pin curl will give us a tighter curl. A bigger pin curl will give, obviously, a bigger curl. So here's a good diagram of the parts of a curl. So the base being in the square, um, that's the, the, the part that's actually, you know, attached to the scalp. So that's sort of what we call the base. And then the stem is that first small section that comes out um, of the base prior to it actually coming into the circle. And the circle is the curl that forms the complete circle on the inside. So here's some really good examples um, of finger waves and pin curls and then um, on the left side those are kind of more what we call like barrel roll curls we'll kind of get into that a little bit later but I just thought that this was actually a really good visual of um, top center the that's like a wet set finger wave and then just below that that's a wet set finger wave that has been um, very carefully brushed out and then on the right hand side that's a really good um, example of um, off base pin curls to kind of give you the exact same look as the finger wave look when you brush that out. So the mobility of a curl. So a no stem curl is placed directly on the base, um, produces a tight, firm, long lasting curl and minimum mobility. Half stem curl has medium movement and is placed half off the base and a full stem curl allows the greatest mobility and the curl is completely pinned off base. So in these two photos that I have, the one in the center, there's a couple of different kinds here. So the one where you can see her fingers, those are considered a full stem curl because they are completely off base. Um, as you can see, sort of like the drag and then the curl. That's what they call a, a full stem curl. Again, the picture on the right hand side um, shows rollers and then it shows um, those pin curls that are on the side that sort of go back. Those again are full stem curls, not on base. And same as the curls kind of underneath the rollers, those two are considered a full stem. And then at the very base, those to me look like half stem curls, which means that they're half on base and half off base. So those are really important terms that you need to understand, whether it comes to um, pin curls, curling iron sets, um, perm wind, all of those things, um, the on base, half off base and off base um, relate to all of those. So it's really important that you understand sort of how those work. Um, as we move along. So pin curl bases. The pin curl base is, is the, the part of the pin curl that is uh, directly on the scalp. So the way that you create that base makes a difference in how the curl is going to look once it's completed. So different bases are used at different parts of the, cur of the curl um, for different different kind of styles. So a rectangular base um, recommended at the side front of the hairline for a smooth upsweep effect. So that being said, that last photo that I showed you where those were like a rectangular base that kind of went back and the curls kind of went back and curled up, um, that's sort of what they mean by a rectangular base at the side front. Triangular base um, along the hairline to prevent breaks or splits and allow a portion of each curl to overlap. So basically starting at your hairline, you'll take a triangular section um, and then sort of triangle up, triangle down so that you don't have like those perfectly straight lines um, when you when you brush out your your style. 
an arc base or a half moon are carved out. They give good direction and can be used at the hairline or at the nape. Square base, suitable for curly hairstyles without much volume or lift. To avoid splits, stagger the sectioning. Um, so what we do with that is we call that like a bricklay, which means no two lines meet up. There's always something sort of cutting everything off so you don't have like that straight line that you can see. Pink curling techniques. So there's carved curls. Um, they're sliced out of a shaping and formed without lifting the hair off the scalp. Ridge curls are placed immediately behind or below a ridge to form a wave. So um, the ridge they mean is a pin curl, or a, pardon me, a finger wave ridge. So we would create the ridge with our fingers and then create the pin curl that sits right on that ridge. Skip waves are two rows of ridge curls, usually on the side of the head. They're a co combination of pin curls and finger waves. And barrel curls have very large center openings and are fastened to the head in a standing position um, on a rectangular base. So again, here are the pin curl base uh, bases or the foundations. Um, this is a really good visual to kind of understand the rectangular base, um, the arc base, the triangular base, and the square base as to how it looks and where you would place them on the head um, to do your styling. Carved curls. Uh, pin curls are sliced from a shaping. So again, you've sort of shaped the hair in kind of the way you want it to go and you've actually carved your your pin curl out of that shape um the the pin curl doesn't lift off the head it stays very close um so it's actually really nice to create like um, especially right around the face if you want to create some nice curls there and then ridge curls are um, placed directly behind or below a ridge so that very first ridge that you see that's considered a finger wave ridge um, so instead of continuing on with a, with a vertical finger wave, they've created a ridge and then the curls behind that will actually create that curve as, as uh, when the hair dries. Skip waves. Uh, there are two rows of ridge curls usually on the side of the head. So this is actually a really good visual in the bottom left hand corner that shows, you know, the finger wave and then the ridge curl and then the shaping and the ridge and then the pin curls again after that and then when you brush it out you see how you get that you know that nice sort of wave but not too structural and then uh, the barrel curls is the same photo as before so basically what that is is be, um, sort of like the size of like a curling iron barrel you wind the hair and then you pin it right on the base um, with the the hair clip the hair pin sorry um, and that actually creates a lot of volume and a very loose wave. Um, a lot of people I know, uh, myself included, actually, you know, curl the hair with the curling iron while it's still hot, roll it up in that same barrel shape and then pin it to the head and let it dry that, like let it cool off that way. Um, I actually find that I get a much longer lasting curl if I allow the curl to cool off in that pinned up state. Um, and I get a lot more volume um, at the root as well. Moving into rollers. So there's a lot of different types of rollers when we talk about hairstyling. Um, Velcro rollers are one of my favorites. Here's my Velcro roller. Um, it actually feels like Velcro. So when you take it and you put it in the hair, it actually sort of sticks on its own. So if you take it and roll it, no pin required, no nothing. And then when you pull it out, it actually gives a really nice, soft, smooth look, um, like a round brush look. Um, I recommended this a lot with my clients who liked that really soft round brush look but really struggled with doing it themselves. Um, the Velcro roller is a really easy way to, to get that look without um, the struggle of uh, a round brush. And then hot rollers, I use hot rollers a lot when I'm doing my updos. Um, I find that they're really easy to do when you kind of throw them all in. If you're doing like say a wedding party, I throw you know all the hot rollers into everybody that's looking for that type of curly um, curls in their hairstyle and then I let them cool and as they're cooling I'm working on somebody else because hot rollers go in hot, like almost so hot that you can barely touch them. Um, 
but the only way that they actually create a really nice curl is you have to let them dry to stone cold. So you have to be able to take your pinky finger and stick it into where the heat is. And if, if it feels cold, then you know that you've got a really good curl. Um, the magnetic rollers, those rollers are the ones that we use and we set those on wet hair and we put the hair, uh, we put the client under the dryer and have the hair dry on the roller under the dryer. This gives a really good um, long lasting set, um, usually more for our older clients um, that like to have that roller set that stays all week. Um, we'll be using the, the magnetic uh, rollers in class when we do our, our roller sets. Um, Velcro rollers, hot rollers, both on dry hair. We don't set those on wet hair. Um, both on dry, magnetic rollers, usually 90% of the time we put them on wet hair. So curl placement. Um, again, this has a lot to do with any type of setting that you're going to do, whether it be wet setting, um, curling iron sets, perm, perm wind, uh, anything like that. It makes a difference that we understand curl placement. So we have a volume curl, there's an on base curl, a slightly off base, and then a full off base. So on the photo that we have actually shows really good um, versions of all of these. So at the very top, that would be considered an off base curl. So you can see where the base is. Then you see that the, the, the hair is pulled fully off base and then the curl. And then um, just over top of the ears, that would be considered an on base curl. And then um, Yeah, then um, I would say the second roller down would be considered a slightly off base curl. So you're basically seeing all three different ideas um, when it comes to curl placement. So the only one that we don't have in this video, in this visual, is the uh, volume curl. So when you're looking for a volume curl, just the same as when we're using the blow dryer and brush, we're actually over directing it back away from the way we want the hair to fall. That's the way we create the most volume. Guidelines to follow when blow drying hair. Um, you guys have already really kind of rocked the blow drying, but I'm going to go over it anyways, just because it's really important to understand if there's, you know, if you ever if have any questions with it. Um, obviously, do not hold the dryer too long in place because we don't want to burn uh, the client or the hair. Um, always direct hot, the hot air away from the client's scalp. Again, we never want to burn the client. Um, and again, when we're pointing the nozzle um, away from the scalp, that's how we're actually smoothing out the hair. When we point it at the scalp, that's when we get the ruffling. Uh, the hot air should flow in the direction that the hair is wound. And breeze dry the hair to 80% dry prior to the round brushing. Uh, that way we don't obviously cause the damage and um, it cuts a lot of the time out of the actual drying process. Curling iron techniques. So to become good with a curling iron, the key is to practice the manipulating of it. Um, depending on the iron that you have, um, a Marcel iron does take a little bit more finesse than a um, spring handle, but basically both take um, a lot of work when you're working from a long hair to understand how to put the curl in properly, how to not create those little um, fish hook ends. So it's really important to understand how to practice with them. And I, again, use cold iron um, so that you're not burning, you know, yourself. If you're using it on your mannequin, or you know, it's not as important if you touch the mannequin with it, but God forbid we don't want to touch a client with it. Practice turning the iron to develop a smooth rotating movement by turning the irons while opening and closing them. Um, and practice in both directions. You're not going to be using the exact same um, curl all the way around the head. You're going to use, you know, back one way and then back the other way. So you need to practice using the iron curling both ways. Releasing the hair. Again, when you're working with longer hair, um, you have to release the hair very kind of in a in a a slow way where you kind of open and close the barrel slowly, 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 and let the, the hair come out. 
um, guiding the hair strand. So practice guiding the strand into the middle of the curl as you rotate the iron. This ensures the strand is firmly in the center of the curl. And then removing the curl from the iron, removing um, by moving the comb to the left and the iron to the right, use the comb to protect the client's scalp from the heat of the iron. So if you're working with uh, shorter hair and you, you want to get as close to the scalp as possible with the curling iron without actually touching, um, what we do is we sort of place our comb on the scalp and then bring the curling iron to it and let the curling iron sit on the comb. So we're actually not, we're getting as close to the scalp as possible without actually having any um, worry of touching the client. Four basic curl patterns. Um, again, we've gone over these, um, but I just want to sort of go over them in the theory side of it. So the root curl creates volume of hair movement um, and a curl formation from root, roots to ends. Works best on shorter hair than longer hair. Um, just because, you know, it's hard to get a really good root curl and then have, you know, a nice curl all the way to the end on on longer hair. The spiral curl, which is made by winding the strand of hair around the, the um, barrel of the curling iron, creates a vertical corkscrew effect, works best on one length hair to create volume. Waves, so create an S pattern and give the texture and volume to the hair, can be applied to any length and any texture. And then end curls are used to give a finished look to the ends of the hair. Um, can be turned under, can be turned up, can be like a little, you know, um, just something to sort of finish off the ends of the, the hair, especially on a really long one length look. So the picture on the top left is actually showing how you use the curling iron and hold the comb underneath. Really important, again, so we can get close to the client's scalp without burning. Um, and that is using the spring handle and then on the right side is the uh, Marcel handle. Two very different um, curling irons and two very different ways to hold your hand but to both get the same effect and use whatever you find most comfortable. Um, the pictures below are the Marcel handle, the spring handle and of course a lot of people prefer to actually curl with a flat iron. So here's um, some really good um, visuals of the types of curls that you get depending on the size of the barrel. So on the far left hand side, you see using a 32 millimeter um, barrel, how loose that curl is. And then you go to a 25 to a 19, 17, you know, the size gets of the barrel gets smaller, which means obviously the size of the curl gets smaller or tighter. And then in the center is the corkscrew curl. Um, bottom right is what we, you know, that's considered the end curl. And same with the top right, that's also considered an end curl. So long hair style. Updos are specialty styles uh, where hair is arranged up and off the shoulders and secured with hairpins, bobby pins, and elastics. Here's three sort of different ideas of, um, you know, updo, upstyle, whatever you want to call it. Um, and the, we're going to be using a lot of different tools um, with doing these with different brushes, different combs. Um, with elastics, with bobby pins, you know, you're going to learn how to pin everything properly and have a really secure uh, style. So the five key points that you must consider um, is number one is your preparation. Making sure that you have all your tools, materials is essential before you start. Um, make a list of the tools that you'll need to complete your style. Consult with your client that the hair is not too freshly washed. Uh, or hair or straightened. Um, once you straighten that hair with a flat iron, you're not getting a curl in it so or anything that would last anyway. So it's really important to have that conversation with your client prior to them coming that not freshly washed hair because it's too slippery and uh, not thermally straightened. They can you know blow it dry, let it dry on its own. Um, it's really important to understand that they understand what they have to do prior to coming in and then what it is that you're going to use once they get there. 
um, working spray while keeping movement in the hair as you work. You don't want anything too stiff. Again, we go back to sectioning. Sectioning is so important um, in everything that we do. So we section the hair prior to beginning to control long hair and keep your style nice and neat. Every style has a different sectioning pattern. Keep the line simple and you'll be able to create the style in a timely manner with a quality result. As soon as you start to lose your sectionings, you start to see that the hair um, sort of becomes out of control and harder to harder to get to where you want it to go. So it's really important um, that you keep your sectioning clean and neat. So pinning, there are two types of pins, bobby pins and hair pins. Bobby pins are, pardon me, closed and hair pins are open at the end. They do totally different things. Um, bobby pins are used to keep the hair tight against the head and can be interlocked. Hair pins are open-ended and anchored by bending the end of the pin back so when inserted it locks into place. Um, best used on hair that it's been back combed um, to keep it from falling out. Um, again, you'll see, I'll show you the difference between, um, you know, a good bobby pin and a bad bobby pin in regards to how well it's going to hold your style. It's a, it's, it's a huge, it's a huge thing. Um, balance. So head shape, neckline, facial structure, and planned outfit all should be analyzed before committing to a look. It's really important to understand um, what the client's going to be wearing before you even begin to talk about a hairstyle because the neckline of whatever it is that they decide to wear also kind of it doesn't matter what idea that they have a lot of it is based on the neckline that they're going to be wearing so something like with a high high neck high collar um, you know you don't want anything kind of hiding it you want to be able to see that so you need to consider more of an up style um, and the texture um, it's what creates your foundation, allows you to build your shape, design your style, and customize it. So the texture that you're creating, if the hair, if they don't have naturally good texture, um, is we do back combing, back brushing. Um, we add like a texturizer just to kind of give the hair a bit of texture to be able to work with it. So these are the classic updos that we will be doing in class. Uh, we actually don't do the bun, we actually do uh, the half updo, but these are sort of like the classics. So the Xinyang is truly classic style, which is uh, in the center. Um, creative out of a simple ponytail um, for formal hairstyling. Um, bottom left is the French, the French twist, um, a technique in formal hairstyling that creates um, sort of a conical shape. Um, you will be doing the French twist and then top right is the classic bun. Um, the bun just has so many different, it's so versatile. You could do the messy bun, the very smooth, sleek. You can do it up high, you can do it low, you can do it off to the side. It's a very versatile, um, a very versatile style. Hairstyling offers a wonderful artistic outlet. Um, basically whatever you can dream up you can create and that's the best part is being able to have a vision of something and bringing it to life in the form of hair is just it's just magical to me um, once you master the basic styles in this chapter the foundation and techniques that these styles require you will have the technical ability to create your own unique and artistic look so again what we're doing in the in level one is giving you the foundations and the basics um, to be able to build your craft so the stuff that we do in this class um, teaching you how to pin uh, teaching you how to back home all of that is to give you the foundation to be able to move on and create styles that you want but these all these styles start with the same basics proper sectioning proper balance um, proper texture and proper pinning um, all, all of these you know that's really important in all of these styles so our final sort of quote of the day our hair is a statement of style an affirmation of beauty and an expression of self-love I thought that that was kind of a really nice um, quote when it comes to hairstyling 
that, uh, you know, our hair and your client's hair is definitely a statement. So I think that that was sort of a really cool um, sort of quote for the end of this chapter. So your homework this week is in chapter 17 in your practical workbook. Please make sure you do it in the practical workbook, not the theory book. Um, questions number 1 to 89 and then stop and then go to questions 102 to 138. Um, because in this chapter there's stuff that we don't do in level 1, you'll be doing that in level 2, so that will, you know, we kind of move on to all that stuff next year. So the only stuff that we're going to be dealing with are in the questions 1 to 89 and then questions 102 to 138 uh, in your practical workbook. Um, Hope you guys have a happy Halloween week and have a safe and happy Halloween weekend. And I will uh, see you then. Thanks. Have a great day.